uh, the principle of hiring is even if you have 40% of uh, uh, requirement check that's a good candidate and you should consider that candidate uh, mm-hmm. for interview welcome to another episode of product unfiltered where we dive deep into the world of product management with industry leaders today we have the privilege of welcoming rakesh singh the vice president of product management at jp morgan chase with over a decade of experience specializing in cloud and analytics solutions within the it sector rakesh has extensive experience spanning diverse domains from his early days as a business consultant to his roles in product management and technical leadership at renowned companies like accenture and ibm rakesh has honed his skills across various facets of this industry and we are super excited to have him on product unfiltered welcome rakesh to product unfiltered Thank you. Pleased to be here. Uh, thanks for having me here. Thanks, Rakesh. And Rakesh, like before, we dive deep into uh, you know product management and gaining insights into the world of product. Why don't you share your experiences right from the journey you started as a business consultant to becoming a product management vice president at JP Morgan? Okay. Yeah. So I I started uh, my career as a business consultant uh, way back in 2010, uh, which I did about for a couple of years, and then uh, uh, you know uh, moved up uh, the ladder and became a program manager in transformation, digital transformation, which was uh, more about cloud transformation, and uh, did that role for around five years. Uh, that role offered me a good amount of knowledge. and uh, when i thought that you know uh, i have learned everything that program management can offer me uh, i became a product manager and uh, my products were uh, dyson wendys when i was uh, executing my product management role in accenture and then you know i took a sort of mid career break uh, did my masters uh, from george washington university and then i eventually found my way to uh, jp morgan chase mm-hmm. but rakesh also share some insights with the listeners in terms of how was your transition being from a business consultant to a product manager because there's a lot of there are a lot of folks out there who are in the consulting domain and they they want to transition to product space so any tips and hacks which you figured out through your journey which which can help those listeners now yeah so business consulting i mean uh, uh, being from core uh, consulting background uh, business consulting is totally different uh, from product management and uh, it depends what you aspire for uh, but yeah when it comes to tips uh, uh, you need to first of all target a product uh, and uh, you need to enhance your knowledge in that product area for instance uh, in accenture i was towards the e-commerce side so my knowledge in terms of e-commerce product uh, was good and i was able to pivot towards product management side of it so you know if let's say uh, if you are in a consulting company doing finance uh, consulting uh, the suggestion is if you aspire to become a product manager look for uh, fintech products uh, will be easier for you to transition mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, okay. a quick follow up on that what are some transferable skills you believe Uh, a person can take from business consulting to product management very good question so so what happens is although you do a uh, product management uh, in product management uh, there is lot of areas which you carry over from business consulting and then from program management as well so in any product management role you will still be doing at least 30% of program management or project management and then you know your writing skills which is uh writing your prds uh, product requirement document uh, which which is actually done in the business consulting role as well so uh although it's not more or less similar but uh, you know 50% of these skills are still transferable and uh, you know 50% is a good amount and 50% you can learn from uh, when you pivot to that role mm-hmm. and what about the remaining 50% like i just wanted to understand what were the remaining 50% of skills which differed in a business consulting role and a product management role so those are uh, uh for instance uh, creating your roadmap uh, prioritizing mm-hmm. your roadmap understanding customer pain points uh, understanding uh, what customer pain point to resolve first uh, what is your p0 p1 uh, then developing your okr which is uh, in alignment with the org uh, structure and your mission and vision of uh, the company so all of these things uh, these are not pivotal you will have to learn as you uh, pivot into a product management role mm-hmm. 
So Rakesh, what motivated you to join a business consultant role and when was that pivotal point in your career when you decided, okay, now I want to move to product space and I'll, I'll grow in this career path? Yeah. Uh, so I did my bachelor's in uh, business and uh, I was able to easily break into uh, the uh, business consultant role uh, that was uh, uh, placed through the college. Uh, so I, I did not think much about it because I didn't even know at that point in time that there is a product management role in this world, right? Uh, but I quickly learned that business consultant role may not offer me a lot. And that's where I pivoted to uh, the program management role, which was a transformation program management role. And there is where during that journey of five years of uh, program management role, I learned what is a product. Uh, instead of program management, it's better to be with product management. Reason being in program management, you were just executing what you told, right? So what you're responsible for is A, B, C task and to ensure that you know you're completing it in x to y z timelines right but mm -hmm. the a b c task is actually being defined by a product manager you don't know where is it coming from and you cannot change that scope of a b c and that's where it's really interesting because you know all the uh, brain that goes into what should be a what should be b what should be c is a product management role. Mm -hmm. so that yeah. really actually interested me uh, that you know i should actually uh, be focused towards uh, the product management role uh, because you know I learned most probably everything that program management had to offer. Me. I think that's so, that's really interesting. Uh, you know, one thing which we often come about or talk about in product management is product management involves so much stakeholder management, right? From talking to program managers, marketing folks, engineering team, design team. So, Rakesh, at any point of time, now you are leading product management at a huge organization like JP Morgan, uh, if you want to go back, do you think that your experience working across so many different roles, right from tech lead at IBM to working as a business consultant and program manager at Accenture really helped you as a product manager rather than you starting your journey just as a PM uh, in, in any of these uh, domain, uh, key domains? No, I, I guess it's... Uh... It's actually built up of uh, uh, all those roles, uh, which actually helped me uh, to break into product management. And uh, you spoke about stakeholder management, right? Yeah. Stakeholder management is a very big piece of uh, the program management. So, you know, uh, if you are from uh, the program management area, getting into uh, product management is very very easy for you because you know uh, you need to learn only 30 to 40 percent of variables of uh, product management role rest all your anyways bringing uh, so yeah uh, stakeholder management is part of the pro uh, program management role and uh, when it comes to a uh, fintech organization what i learned uh, from last 10 years uh, i'm bringing all of them here for instance if uh, uh, my experience at uh, internet brands that was uh, uh, a very good experience, reason being, you know, I was working for Travel Vertical within Internet Brands. Internet yeah. Brands may be a new name, but, uh, you know, uh, one of the sub or, or child companies are WebMD. Uh, so they have verticals like uh, healthcare, travel, automobile. Uh, so I was taking care of the travel products and they had like 14 travel products, 14 websites. And that was one of uh, the role that I liked in product management uh, a lot. That was that organization was a very product uh, driven organization and uh, i learned a lot of nuances and variables like you know uh, on one web web page as per seo suggestion or recommendation you shouldn't have anything more than 30% of uh, ads uh, many more things like you know uh, how many vendors can uh, you actually integrate uh, and do apis on a web page so those all were seo suggestions which which was, uh, you know, carried over in JP Morgan Chase as well. And it really helped me crack the interview for JP Morgan Chase. Mm -hmm. that, that's, good. that's good to know, Rakesh. Um, also, I, I want to take a step back and you mentioned that you did your bachelor's in business, right? And yeah. we hear a lot of people saying that if you are entering the product space, it's good to have a technical background. So maybe talk 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 about that also a bit like how did your bachelor's in business help you or was it a hindrance in your path to enter into product space how was that uh good that uh, you brought that up uh, and uh, you know uh 
both i would say uh, you you actually need business technical both but you know your question is towards uh, your bachelor's was in business and did it help you or did it become a hurdle so <clears throat> i would say both so uh, business actually helps you uh, execute all the product management functions uh, which is towards the business side of the product management but then there is technical component as well and uh, you know i i learned uh, when i was doing my product manager role at accenture for 3 years that uh, if you are if you are trying to do a technical product uh, the know how and knowledge of uh, technical uh, 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 jargons and uh, technical depth is very important and that is why i took a decision of taking a mid career break and pursued my masters in information systems and uh, that has done actually wonders and you know i am able to uh, work on uh, products to automate uh, uh, looking at the ai models uh, testing the ai models uh, training the ai models and automate all those functions which can reduce uh, man hour effort so i would say both uh, uh, having a technical knowledge is must but it also depends upon your product and there are also roles like you know in some industry you have non tech product manager and then you have technical program manager so you know if you're getting into a non tech product management and you have a technical program manager then you're fine with the business uh, knowledge but you know if you're getting into technical product management you have to have the technical knowledge mm -hmm. that makes sense um also rakesh when you did your masters um we would love to know how was the landscape back then because today we see uh, people early in their career if they want to enter into product space the best route they think is get a masters in product management or some similar level of degrees as you mentioned information systems is also one of the trending degrees here um do you think it's a good route for early career product managers to do a masters and then enter in the product space or would you recommend them to actually get some corporate experience uh, see how the industry evolves and then probably enter into that particular industry as a product manager uh i would go with the second option which is you know uh you should have some prior experience even if it is not into product management it really helps you understand how an organization functions and then lot of components within an organization which is you know your finance uh, your uh, recruiting team your marketing team uh your business team how they are getting the business so if you have a know how uh, it really helps excel in the interview so i would say uh definitely uh, a masters uh, is a variable and when you're talking about uh, programs in masters two successful programs are uh, management in information systems uh, product management uh, uh, masters in product management is very limited uh, it is not offered in on uh, colleges or universities the third masters program that i can uh, recommend is engineering management more or less every college will have engineering management so yeah those are the three programs that i would prefer but you know you should i would i would recommend that you should have at least 2 years of experience then it becomes really easy to break into product management mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but rakesh like going back do you think it's it's worth it to pursue a masters to transition into product management like are there any transferable skills which you are able to gain in that masters program or investing the same time in getting some valuable work experience helps you in a long term to get into product management yeah so good question so it depends if you are if you are trying to break into product management early in the career uh two years of experience and a masters is going to help you but if mm -hmm. you want to build up upon your experience and break into product management uh, then you know you will have to have 5 uh, years of experience 7 years of experience and then try to break into product management or within the organization uh, so you know uh, we're talking about majorly uh, us market and all the uh, big companies they really promote internal mobility so even mm -hmm. if you get into the uh, job function where you actually work let's say that you know you were a uh, you're a business analyst or let's say you're a data engineer uh, you still break into a big company as a data engineer it's not that tough to pivot into uh, a product management role uh, because you know all these uh, big tech companies and fin uh, fintech companies they promote internal mobility of roles so uh, the answer is yeah uh, if you are early in your career and you want to uh, get into product management masters is going to help you but if you want to build upon uh, the experience uh, then you know uh, you should have 5 to 7 years of experience to break into product 
Yeah, I have a quick follow-up question here, Rakesh. No. Uh, like following up on what you mentioned about building the right kind of experiences to get into product management. But one question which we usually encounter for from many early career professionals is: Is product management right for me or not? I've been hearing product management like it's a very trending thing. Everybody wants to get into it. Yeah. Uh, but is it really for me or not? So if if I ask you, like Rakesh, ten years back, what? are three key things which you think like should be a part of your personality or your interest to make a decision uh, if you want to get into product management or not yeah so good question and uh, uh, thinking about my career if i if i think about when i started uh, back in accenture i never thought about uh, uh, product management and and at that point in time uh, the product industry was not even that mature so when i learned about uh, product management uh, i knew that you know this is what i want to pursue and uh, when i was executing my product management role in accenture for 3 years and when i thought of uh, pursuing masters i was certain that you know after masters i want to do product management i don't want to do anything else and based on that i did the selection of uh, the masters program that i wanted to pursue so if you have that level of clarity uh, when you are exploring the uh, career options career opportunities and if you have that level of uh, clarity that you know you want to get into product management or for for any 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 career any aspiration if you have that clarity it becomes your journey becomes really easy you would know that what course you need to do uh, instead of you know choosing the program first and then thinking about that you know where do you want to go so i would say uh, invest some time and do your research on where do you want to go and based on that choose the course now uh, your question uh, towards what are those three critical components uh, that a pm should have uh, which can make a pm successful or break into product management so i would say first is uh, critical thinking second is decision making and third is command on business so you will be interacting with uh, uh, users uh, customers vendors so business is must uh, critical thinking uh, you need to choose as to you know uh, what do you want to develop over what do you not want to develop so all of these components are uh, very important if you have those three integral parts uh, in your personality uh, you're going to succeed uh, uh, in product management so now rakesh um, since we have got good insights in terms of how did your career path uh, help you move towards product i would also want to understand since you're working for jp morgan chase which is one of the giants i would say in the fintech domain or in the financial sector um could you also help our listeners uh, break down the whole financial industry in general like what are the different verticals when we talk about financial sector and yeah. then we can talk more about fintech and how how's your role evolving in that domain sure so yeah uh, since you said one of the giant uh, it's actually the giant <laughs> so uh, jp morgan chase has the uh, highest market share in terms of uh, banking uh, when it comes to products services and everything so now <clears throat> let's try and understand the fintech world and break it down to understand how a org looks like uh, in fintech so uh, there is uh, orgs are like you know investment banking then you have uh, uh, you know research and r&d uh, then you have security uh, then you have the technology uh, and within technology you have verticals like uh, uh, let's say ip which is uh, infrastructure uh, then you have within infrastructure uh, you have uh, multiple layers and multiple orgs and then you have application uh, and within infrastructure you have like compute uh, uh, network uh then you have databases you have a storage and these all components uh, these all services give services to uh internal uh, uh customers uh, in let's say investment banking and in security domain or in application domain so you know if you want to build anything uh, any application you need to have the infrastructure available uh let's say uh, for instance uh, payment systems right uh so you need to know that you know how your uh, projection is and what sort of infrastructure do you need uh, and uh, the verticals are uh, payments uh, then you know your cib which is investment banking 
strategy banking security security and audit is a very big component in a banking industry uh, mm-hmm. so you know why it is because uh, you are dealing with cross border uh, money transfer uh, you are dealing with uh, you know uh, your components which is your technical component should be locally based and these all audit happens internally and externally as well uh, your your ids uh, are they getting automatically rotated uh, or not so all of these components are very critical i'm not uh, uh, dwelling down into details of uh, uh, audit and uh, risk in compliance but you know uh, in in any product in any product organization within jp morgan chase there is one entity of security uh, and uh, risk in compliance so so any product will have one role or one component of uh, security risk in compliance uh, which is audit and everything which could be internal and external audit everything so now coming to uh, the product that i do uh, i work for uh, the org that is called uh, npl uh, uh, the full form is uh, network product line and uh, as part of uh, my portfolio uh, i am managing uh, cloud network products and now i am also managing on prem network products like data center uh, network products so <clears throat> products like uh, vpc endpoints route 53 private nat gateway on the on prem side switching routing dns ddi all those products mm-hmm. i hope that that gives you explanation as to you know how how the uh, fintech industry looks like uh, i totally forgot one more component as part of my role there is also one more product that is called merchant so you know the same product that i do for uh, uh, for other orgs i do it for merchant as well and what is merchant uh, so for <clears throat> external uh, users or let's say for external world merchant is nothing but when your payment uh, hits the jp morgan chase gateway how we are managing that uh, core infrastructure and how we are ensuring that you know the payments are uh, getting through it's not declining uh, uh, the transactions are getting through not only the, uh, that how do we scale that like you know for for instance amazon is one of our uh, biggest uh, merchant customer and uh, when there is amazon prime day uh, how are we handling that volume of transaction to ensure everything goes through so that's also part of uh, uh, that role that you know management of the capacity and build the capacity to ensure everything goes through i think mm-hmm. that's that's really interesting rakesh in fact uh, the way you explained the last part of your answer specifically the amazon answer it really helped us understand that how things usually work in such a huge fintech giant uh, rakesh will it also be possible like i know you mentioned various different teams which work at jp morgan but if it's possible if you can share a user journey like how a transaction is first being processed what all teams are being involved in that journey and yeah. how does the flow of information take place yeah so so one product team will have architecture team a uh, engineering team which is product engineering then a service delivery team and then uh, you know your scrum master and uh, project managers and then eventually a, a product manager or a product owner so those are uh, the teams uh, the product engineering will only do a uh, product feature development engineering service delivery will do uh, the day in day out uh, like you know let me break it down how it works so <clears throat> let's say a user from compute uh, so my product is b2b Mm-hmm. so user from compute is trying to build a compute fabric or let's say a compute uh, device which is nothing a server and it has uh, you know they have customized in a way uh, that you know they need uh, certain uh, configurations and certain hardware parameters from network to connect to that compute uh, service right now uh, the user i will uh, connect with the user try and understand as to you know uh, what's their requirement what is the configuration that they are working uh, on and then you know what is the changes that they need uh, from our perspective like you know if i have xyz existing what is it that they are asking for can i do xyz plus 1 or do i have to change my xyz to accommodate the user's request right so <clears throat> user uh, will uh, uh after the user interview it goes to the engineering team and then we assess as to you know do we need to actually build a new pattern or do we need to make the changes in the existing pattern and call it let's say uh compute uh compute customized f- 
fabric number two or number three, which will be given to the customer uh, uh, so that you know they can use that platform. Uh, then you know the architecture team comes into place. They will review uh, that you know this architecture is aligned with uh, the J.P. Morgan Chase mission and vision, and plus uh, security and audit compliance. Uh, then we will do uh, the testing on uh, lab environment, which is uh, you know your UAT. Uh, mm-hmm. After uh, we establish an MVP, we will do a UAT. Once the UAT is done and everything is successful, we move it to prod. I mean, like like uh, every other product does. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the engagement uh, in terms of uh, user engagement is uh, all B2B, which is internal. Uh, and, uh, you know, I if I'm talking to a customer, it will be internal JP Morgan Chase customer. Like a quick follow-up question here, uh, Rakesh. What is UAT? You mentioned that uh, you guys work on UAT and then move it to the final stage. What exactly does UAT mean? Yeah, so, so UAT is uh, user acceptance uh, testing. Uh, so we have... Uh, separate i mean any organization will have separate uh, environments uh, uh, which is lab and then prod uh, mm-hmm. so before you promote anything to production uh, you test on lab if everything is working fine uh, if your results you know you decide certain kpis uh, if uh, every kpi is hitting the mark then you move it to production and and that testing which happens in the lab environment is called qa mm-hmm. thank you so, Rakesh, if someone is entering into fintech space uh, and they want to be a product manager, what would be top three qualities uh, you look for? Because now you are in a leadership position, you you will be recruiting a lot of people in and around for product management roles. So, while figuring out which candidate would be a good fit, what are top three qualities you look for in a product manager in fintech domain? Okay, so there is... Uh one thing in product management that is called a generic product manager and then a specialized product manager right mm-hmm. so specialized product manager comes after an experience of five years which actually means that you know that specialized product manager doesn't have only a product management skill but is is uh, is knowing about one particular domain and is a specialized in one particular domain right so uh so that happens for senior product managers or uh, or uh, leadership roles. Uh, now, when it comes to associate roles or senior associate roles, uh, which is majorly where we hire, uh, uh, any product management experience, which is you know two year plus, is going to help. And uh, we will prefer hiring a generic product manager instead of specialized product manager. So you know you don't need so to say. Uh, let's say I am in networking space, uh, and I'm if if I'm hiring for associate roles, I would not uh, be stuck on the uh, candidate should have the knowledge of networking component. Uh, if mm-hmm. candidate will have any of those two components, which is networking or product uh, management knowledge or experience, that's first criteria. So okay. uh, that's that's number one. That's how uh, the shortlisting happens. Uh, you know, you qualify on any of th- those two qualifiers. Uh, either uh, you have been a product manager for last two years or uh, you have uh, certain experience into that particular domain. So so that's one qualifying criteria. Other is if we are hiring at the associate level roles, uh, uh, if you have uh, any finance uh, knowledge or exposure, even if let's say that, you know, you've just done undergrad and uh, you're trying to break into uh, product management into a fintech uh, did you do any project which is related to finance uh, and mm-hmm. you know if you have any knowledge in the finance domain uh, that is really helpful uh, but that is generally uh, the interns uh, so how it works in jp morgan chase is you know there is an internship program and you work on the internship internship program for JP Morgan Chase, and then you graduate, and then they decide as to you know uh, if uh, they can extend you a full time role or not. So the way it happens uh, in any other organization, but the duration in JP Morgan Chase is higher than uh, other uh, organizations. I guess it's it's one year or two year. So <clears throat> so that's how we uh, do uh, uh, do selection or hiring for two candidates, which is you know one is who is beginner, the other who has some bit of experience. Uh, those are the variables that we look at. But um, we also see a lot of IT folks, uh, maybe they'll be in different roles, let's say software engineering or solution architect or XYZ roles. 
slowly they want to transition into product space and we've been seeing this trend at uh, this trend going on uh, very often these days so let's say if i'm a, if i'm someone who has worked in it for 3 4 years in different roles and now i want to enter into product space in a fintech company like jp morgan what would you look for in me because i don't come with a financial background or any fintech experience but i have some good understanding of how it industry works so if you are taking my interview what are some of the core skills for particularly product management which you look for okay very good question so yeah let's talk about three things here so <clears throat> coming from it definitely have upper edge uh, why because you know uh, the products that we are building those are not non tech products those are tech products right so so any prior knowledge uh, in it which is you know uh, let's say even if you're doing a software engineering uh, you would be able to understand everything that's going around the product pretty easily uh, so that's that's one of uh, uh, the qualifying criteria that really helps like you know if you look at me uh, i had it knowledge i had product management experience both but i didn't have the fintech experience right so mm-hmm. similarly uh, you need to uh, come up with uh, your uh, interest that you know why are you interested in uh, fintech uh, if you have that answer first i mean you need to answer this to yourself if you have that answer then probably you know you will be able to crack those interviews easily if you are able to convince yourself first that you know why fintech then probably you can uh, start cracking the interviews for fintech so uh, uh coming back to your question uh if if i have to uh if i have to hire somebody from it and they don't have the fintech experience uh there is the answer that you know uh if you are interested in fintech if you know what fintech is and if you know end to end what it is then you know it makes the journey easy uh for that particular candidate to break into product management because you know it uh, you would have seen i mean 70 to 60% people are actually uh, transitioning from it role to product management right so it's very easy for them because they know end to end how it is working it's just that within that product organization they are part of the engineering function i mean the way i have explained every product management team will have engineering architecture uh, uh, scrum master project manager and then product management right so if they are working in the same framework instead of product management if they are in engineering they will still know everything how it works and they will still know uh, everything about the it so you know for them it's really easy to pivot into uh, product management mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i, I forgot one more thing so so uh, when you were asking me the question that you know how the org looks like in a fintech uh i explained about all the uh, roles within a po- uh, product or i totally forgot there is one more team that is called automation right so as part of uh, any product in jp morgan chase there will be one more team that is called automation and their job is to identify opportunities and automate all those functions uh, where you know it can reduce the man hour effort got mm-hmm. it got it uh, but rakesh thank you so much for sharing insights into you know that that aspect that uh you know when you get into product management you can either be a specialized pm or a generalist pm and when you are a generalist pm maybe the domain knowledge is not that important even if you have pm experience it's comparatively easy to switch gears but what about the other side like if you have more than 5 years of experience and you are a specialized pm say in networking industry now uh you know maybe because of external factors or maybe because you are really motivated to some other sector for example edtech so how is it like for a product leader who is specialized in one certain industry to move into a completely different industry because while you are leading any org like you are currently a vp at jp morgan chase i'm sure that you'll not be having the bandwidth to take different projects or you know to have a side hustle in a different domain so how how does transitioning at such kind of stage usually occurs yeah uh so looking at my current experience uh, i mean if i see uh, the hires within last two years the new hires within last two years uh domain knowledge supersedes uh, uh, the org knowledge which is you know uh, if you have domain knowledge and you don't have a fintech knowledge i have seen uh, that you know uh, you won't actually get uh, uh, all that you want right so 
So uh, the principle of hiring is even if you have 40% of uh, uh, requirement check, that's a good candidate and you should consider that candidate uh, mm -hmm. for interview. Now, 40% uh, means uh, that, you know, that candidate is possibly hitting some of the mark, but uh, still eligible for the interview, right? So <clears throat> if you are a domain expert, let's say you are expert in automation, right? And uh, uh, let's say uh, there is a position which says automation product manager, right? And mm -hmm. that is towards the fintech side. Uh, it totally depends that, you know, uh, how many candidates are uh, uh, qualifying for that uh, job. And then, you know, what is the interview pool for that particular job? If uh, we have a candidate who has experience in a product, which is, you know, automation, and then also in finance, that will be given preference. But if we have in our pool, we do not have people uh, where, you know, they have, let's say, fintech knowledge, but not product knowledge then we would mm -hmm. go with uh, who knows product because you know what uh, fintech tech and healthcare can be learned within two years but uh, uh, getting uh, to know the product is something uh, what actually takes time and that is what makes you specialized so <clears throat> when it comes to specialized hiring uh, it is prioritized that you know uh, if your domain knowledge is there, it will be prioritized over the fintech knowledge. Let's say, for example, yeah. let's say uh, an automation product manager who has seven years of experience uh, and has no fintech experience. And there is one more candidate uh, who has four years of automation experience and also has fintech experience. In my opinion, I would probably go with the one who has seven years of automation experience yeah. because, you know, he's specialized in that domain or she is specialized in that domain putting maybe one, one and a half year, two years uh, will uh, bring that variable of uh, uh, making that particular candidate understand how a fintech organization works. But, you know, uh, that expertise is something which is uh, unique and uh, that is what uh, is called niche skill. So if if any candidate has that uh, specialty, it is preferred over in inexperienced roles. Uh, it is preferred over the domain knowledge. Mm -hmm. um also, uh, if you can touch base a bit about this, Akesh, because that's what is trending, right? Um, there's, there's disruption in every single industry with the advent of generative AI, right? So what implications would we be seeing through generative AI in the fintech space? What are some of the disruptions which you're thinking or seeing in coming in the fintech domain? I don't think so. So, so you know what? Uh, I get this question a lot. Uh, how many jobs are going to be reduced because of AI and things like that? So this ai market is pretty uh, premature uh, before it starts uh, cutting the jobs it will take minimum 10 to 15 years to mature and meanwhile <laughs> i mean within 10 to 15 years uh, everybody is growing uh, the population is growing the industry is growing the market cap for every company is growing uh, so i don't think it's going to impact anything but it will definitely change the way you work like you know uh, talking about jp morgan chase last year the focus was cloud this year uh, 2024 the focus is ai right so we have already allocated how much do we want to invest in ai this year uh, but will that investment uh, see uh, that much of return this year maybe not i mean in next couple of years we will start seeing uh, that you know if that's giving us return or not for instance uh, we uh, at JP Morgan Chase have built our internal uh, chat GPT module, which is called uh, LLM. Uh, and that is mature enough. Uh, but yeah, uh, is that giving us the return that we need? I mean, everybody in JP Morgan Chase may not be even aware of that module and uh, may not be even using that module at this point in time. So, so uh, implementing AI in all job functions uh, is a huge task. For an organization like JP Morgan Chase, it needs a lot of workforce. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, we implement this, it will be 10, 12 years uh, before we mature in the AI side of uh, the fintech. And I'm talking about 10, 12 years and within 10, 12 years, uh, we will, uh, the market will grow. Everything is going to grow. So, so I don't see that, you know, it's going to impact anyone as such uh, in the fintech industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
my question um was particular towards let's say when you talked about that um jp morgan is building their own llms um do you think in long term it's going to help you differentiate in the industry in terms of competition competitive landscape that people with their own llms or people who took some uh, early mover advantage in uh, in the a generative ai space have some edge over the market what's what's your understanding about it and how are, how is the industry shaping up so industry is obviously moving faster than uh, jp morgan cheese i would tell you why uh, uh, so it takes time uh, in jp morgan cheese uh, or 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 so to say in any fintech company uh, to adapt anything that industry is doing uh, because yeah. you know what uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of restrictions policies compliance and audit so let's say amazon or or google can use the external chat gpt but in jp morgan chase you cannot use anything external so everything has to be internal right so <clears throat> that's the reason why it takes time uh, because you know the module is going to be different what you're going to put in the module as your string value or search criteria is totally going to be different the libraries that you're going to build is going to be an internal library uh, you cannot replicate anything uh, it 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 is going to be your model so uh getting first of all approvals uh, from your architecture or des- uh, design council uh, takes uh, really long than usual because you know what it's not actually their fault uh, they have to look at uh, the compliance and it takes yeah. uh, uh, more than usual to uh, review those uh, 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 architecture that we are building and and that's why you know uh, in fintech company it it takes long uh, i mean uh, one example uh, in 2023 mid 2023 we uh, we shifted from skype to teams so that's how mm-hmm. fast i mean i'm not, i'm not saying that uh, you know we are we are behind we can actually yeah. go to slack as well but it's not easy i mean you need to ensure that there is no open communication with the external world it is not federated with any of the companies so it it actually takes time to build that proof of concept and implement mm mm-hmm. You no know, that makes sense because if if you operate in fintech or any financial company i would say there are a lot of compliances and rules and regulations around and Hello. then you need to stick to the high availability concept which we say because it's a banking domain so you need to be active all the time yeah. um that's good to know rakesh lots of good insights from the fintech industry we could derive from the conversation but on a lighter note uh, i was just curious to ask our guest this question that since you are a leader in the product space right now um if not product management what would you do in your career like let's say tomorrow we say rakesh uh, no more product management then what would be your career path you know what uh, i i thought about this and uh, uh, when when i uh, got through to uh, jp morgan chase i was thinking that you know is that what i want to do uh, uh, during uh, my career and throughout my career and uh, and the answer was uh, absolutely yes but if i have to pursue anything else uh, i would pursue anything on the data side of uh, the world so you know let's say uh, uh, i have i have been involved in couple of uh, projects uh, which is uh, related to generative ai and uh, mm-hmm. uh, looking at what it can uh, what wonders can it do uh, i was really thinking that you know if if i have to change my role it has to be anything in generative ai and and coming to your question that you know if not product management then what then probably product management in generative ai <laughs> okay <laughs> but rakesh you know this is one very common question why product management but rather than asking this question i want to ask you why not product management what are some reasons you will not uh you know suggest getting into product management to any uh individual who is planning to get into product yeah so ownership is one thing so so what happens is uh, let's say uh, as i explained that within a product organization you have multiple teams right now uh, what happens is everybody is doing their own role right but the ownership is of the product manager the success is going to be of the product manager or uh, the failure is going to be of the product manager so you know if you yeah. if you want to ensure uh, that you know you do your 9 to 5 job you learn uh, everything that you can 
uh, maybe uh, product management is not for you because uh, you know if if anything fails, uh, everything is going to be on you, and uh, uh, you have to justify it to the business. And then you know if you need additional timelines or anything, it's not the architecture or the engineering team. I mean, obviously uh, they are pulled, but you know the ownership is yours, uh, governance is yeah. yours uh, as to you know. Uh, why it did not go as per plan and uh, if there was anything that uh, uh, happened in between uh, how was it uh, not uh, caught in between as to you know if if anything uh, any variable that came in between of the project uh, mm -hmm. we should have been aware of that and uh, if if there are any timelines changes or let's say a bug in uh, the code uh, <clears throat> we should have factored in for that so so why not product management uh, Two things, if your career as aspiration is innovation, maybe software is the best way to go. Uh, second is uh, that, you know, uh, if you want to do uh, your job and uh, go back home, which is nine to five and uh, yeah. live your life peacefully, maybe product management is not for you. Uh, so I would say, yeah, those those are the reasons uh, uh, because, you know, uh, the governance of uh, that feature, I mean, uh, yeah. the ownership of that feature is going to come to uh, the product manager. Mm -hmm. Like, is it safe to say that if you want to have a nine to five job, a typical nine to five job, maybe getting into product management is not your cup of tea? <laughs> So it depends. I mean, what your product is, it, it depends in some, uh, some aspects, some of the products are pretty quiet, right? Uh, mm. uh, but you know, if you're working for a critical product, uh, then definitely not. And, and just think about it, uh, uh, fintech company network is your product. What else could be critical? Right. So, yeah. so, uh, yeah. it, it simply means, uh, that, you know, uh, for instance, uh, on Amazon side, if you're working uh, towards the AWS side and any of the AWS component, it's a critical role. So mm. uh, you have to ensure that your services are up uh, uh, more or less every time. And uh, you know what? At times, uh, we are also pulled in the uh, in the minx. I mean, P1 incidents that happens. Uh, although product has uh, more or less nothing to do because you know. Uh, product has released the feature and now it's uh, operations job to maintain uh, maintain it uh, but at times we are also pulled on uh, 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 major incident management calls as well and and mm -hmm. it can happen anytime uh, yeah so it depends <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much rakesh for sharing all these wonderful insights i think we're moving towards the end of our podcast but mm -hmm. yeah before we end the podcast you would love to know first that what are some resources that you follow to keep yourself updated in the field of product management. Yeah, so <clears throat> I totally forgot covering one thing that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, product management in a consulting firm and product management in a product firm. Uh, when I say product, yeah. it could be fintech, it could be tech. Those are totally different. And uh, uh, I had, uh, when I was going through the uh, phase of interview after uh, my graduation, uh, I had uh, uh, opportunities in consulting firms as well. Uh, but, you know, since I did uh, consulting or already, I thought of exploring the uh, product uh, opportunities more. And and here is where the differentiators are. Uh, so, you know, the focus towards business in consulting is way more. Uh, uh, and in, in, uh, in product organization, the focus towards product is way more which is the right way of doing that mm -hmm. so i mean if you if you do both the roles you will be able to understand these variables and uh, you know in based on my experience if i am given an opportunity again to go back to product world of consulting or be in a product world of product uh, for me the preference is going to be uh, be with the product world of product because you know what you actually get to do more about the product you invest less time managing business documentation i mean you do documentation but you know it it doesn't matter how are you doing uh, your documentation uh, uh, what matters is you're doing the documentation but in the uh, consulting firm what happens is you know how your documentation is looking like is also one of the parameter and uh, variable because you know you are facing client and it should be presentable so exactly. those you save actually a lot of time on that and you actually invest that time in building a long-lasting world-class product 
so that's that's one variable uh, that I forgot uh, uh, to uh, highlight. Uh, coming back to your question, uh, your question was uh, I forgot. You will have to repeat what, your question. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think you know you mentioned a great point that that is something me and Rahul were also discussing when we were planning to start a career. Is that yes, there are many opportunities which look very interesting while getting into product management, but are they really product based companies or not? And as you mentioned, product documentation, oh my God, that's a time-consuming task where I think me and Rahul also worked on a project on how can we reduce a product manager's time on product documentation and management and investing the same time in creating world-class products. So I think yeah. you just validated that assumption of ours. But yes, uh, my my uh, question here was, what are some resources that you follow to keep yourself updated oh, yeah. in the world of product management? Got it, yeah. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Uh, when I was uh, uh, pursuing all those interviews, uh, in fact, I started very early. Uh, I graduated in May 2022. I started uh, way back in December, right? Uh, one of the most valuable uh, resource, I would say, is Try Exponent. Uh, that was, I mean, that that really did wonders to me. And uh, uh, the one-to-one -one interview session that uh, uh, Try Exponent does. Uh, that's that's actually uh, really amazing. What actually happens uh, in those sessions is you may not get the industry experts. You will probably get the peers. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, meeting with 10 different peers will uh, broaden your uh, vision and thinking as to, you know, how they think. And then, you know, yeah. you can bring all of that while you are structuring your responses during the interview, right? So that's, that's one resource. Uh, second is... <clears throat> Uh, on Try Exponent itself, uh, there is a lot of uh, question bank uh, that will actually help you. Uh, yeah. Then, you know, you uh, you look at uh, the mock interviews uh, of uh, some, of, some of the product uh, uh, roles. You will get to know that, you know, what are uh, uh, the functions within the product or, or areas within the product. Uh, mm -hmm. Is asked during the interview, let's say product execution, right? So uh, you should know what is the concept of product execution because you never know you're probably appearing for the uh, interview of uh, Walmart and they may ask you a question about healthcare. So, so if you are preparing your interview based on they're going to uh, talk about Walmart product, no, that's not, that's probably not going to happen because yeah. they know that you would have come prepared. So, so you need to really develop a framework to respond to all questions mm -hmm. and pivot yourself real time uh, to that framework. Uh, what I did is uh, I really uh, practiced a lot uh, uh, during my interviews, uh, star-based uh, responses. Uh, I thought of all execution situation, uh, built the framework for all uh, pro uh, product management uh, uh, questions. And then that really actually helped me to break through uh, to the interview. And, and uh, the, the interview of the JP Morgan Chase was uh, not an easy one. Uh, I remember uh, I had like, four rounds, not an easy one to crack. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, I had one more opportunity uh, since I'm from consulting background, it was relatively easier for me to uh, crack because you know I did uh, cloud and I did product management in cloud. So it was easy for me to crack. But uh, within a product organization, uh, you have to have all those uh, uh, areas covered, which is product sense, uh, product execution, product thinking, mm -hmm. all of Mm -hmm. That's great to know, Rakesh. Um, so before we end the podcast, I would also love to know this from you. Now, now that you look back, look back at your career, um, what advice would you give to a young, uh, to your younger self when you were starting out in product management? Like, what are the things you think you could have done differently, or what are the things you think you did great, which helped you shape out your career now? Any advices to your younger self from now on? Yeah. So. <clears throat> I would not say to my younger self, I didn't even know about product when I started my career. Uh, but yeah, when I was in uh, in the journey of uh, pursuing my master's, I would say that, you know, when you're executing uh, any project, when you're working on any project, let's say database project or information system project where uh, you are uh, developing, uh, let's say, uh, a database. Uh, since your target is... Uh, uh, to go into product management role, uh, always think that, you know, you're 
you will do the technical part of the project but think about the product management aspect as well if you if you execute those projects even if you don't have experience like you know uh, you spoke about my younger self so let's say i didn't have experience and i was working on college projects uh, i did uh, complete all my projects technically uh, uh, the best way it was possible but you know adding the component of product management in all project will bring a variable will bring a maturity how you think about product management and you can also showcase and talk about it uh, during your interviews as well mm-hmm. perfect uh, thank you so much rakesh uh, this officially brings us to the end of the podcast but it's always a pleasure to speak to product leaders like you and understand from your mindset how do you see the product landscape shaping out and how would people like us who are early in their career uh, would want to enter in the product space because it's very rare that we you get to speak to such product leaders and understand their career journey because it's always exciting to see because when you started in the product space i would say those were the early days of product and today it's it's one of those hype words that everyone wants to be in the product space they want to explore building products there's a lot of myths there's a lot of misconceptions around so the idea of the podcast was uh, if we can burst some of those out help people understand what actually is product management maybe from outside it sounds uh, very lucrative to enter in the domain but what actually is inside there and thanks to all the product leaders like you who spare some time to speak to us and share those wisdoms with all our listeners out there so this officially brings us to the end of today's podcast hope all our listeners will enjoy this episode and there's a lot which will help them uh, explore in their career path stay tuned for more such exciting episodes thank you so much for tuning into product unfiltered Thank you thank you very much for having me here thanks